Hello, you guys. So today I want to read to you an article from Mark McDonald's Substack, which I subscribe to, called Why American Women Are Undateable. Mark McDonald is a Los Angeles area psychiatrist in private practice, treating mostly, I think, adolescents in a um, higher income area of Western Los Angeles. He's the author of Freedom From Fear. And his first two books, he really came down hard on American men for being addicted to fear and instead of leading, leading women with strength and courage and common sense, they were afraid and masking up weak little cowards. And frankly, I agree with that. Sorry, I hope this channel, if YouTube video doesn't get taken down. And I just want to say that when men say they're afraid to ask women out because it's harassment, I think they're cowards. I don't respect men like that. So um, uh, what makes a man attractive isn't his height or his six-pack abs. Um, unlike some of the comments people leave, it's his confidence, his courage, his honor. And those are qualities that are lacking. And I don't necessarily know where it's coming from. But today, he goes just as hard on women. So guys, this one's for you. <laughs> um, there's a lot of cultural shifts going on that are kind of pitting men against women, and it's not very good. Uh, I find a real lack in masculinity, and uh, according to a lot of men, they're finding a lack in femininity. Everybody's so angry and so afraid and hostile, and not everyone, but kind of a cultural trend. So this is from um, his Substack. I just wanted to show you. I subscribe to it. Why Amer American women are undateable. Okay, no one wants to play with a porcupine is the subtitle. So a 24-year-old patient of his this week had said, I don't even want to go on any dates anymore. They just feel like a chore. I heard this from my 24-year-old male patient this week. I hear it frequently from men everywhere. I hear it in bars, at professional conferences, over coffee, at lunch. I hear it because American women have become undateable. American women today suffer from a combination of emotional and character, characterologic pathology that renders them unfit to be romantic partners to men. On the emotional side, they're angry, anxious, and dysregulated. Men find them exhausting and not at all fun to be around. In addition to their unpleasant emotions, men must also contend with their toxic personality traits, narcissism, ingratitude, and an overbearing and judgmental attitude that appears to be constant. American women approach dating as a fact and fault-finding mission with a degree of arrogance that can only come from a profound absence of self-awareness. They have no idea what their role is in the encounter or how to properly support the man who is leading the date. They act as saboteurs rather than facilitators. Most men have tired of this. Certainly the failings of men play their own role in the dating disaster of today's America. I have written about these failings extensively here and in my first book, United States of Fear. Again, this is the second book, The Solution to the Fear. In the first book, it goes into the fear. Masculinity is in decline in the West. Without it, dating cannot be successful. Strength, courage, mastery, and honor are the essential traits of masculinity, according to Jack Donovan, author of The Way of Men. And few men display those traits today. Yet, Equally few women display the essential traits of femininity either. 
Donovan explains that to find a woman desirable, a man requires nothing more than for her to be pretty, carefree, and charming. Today's American women cannot even meet that expectation. I went to dinner recently at a restaurant in Westwood near the UCLA campus. Every customer appeared to be a university student. I noticed a group of girls walked past me as they got up from their table. They all looked and dressed alike, oversized t-shirts, baggy jeans, non-styled hair, no makeup. They appeared to be poorly dressed boys. I turned to the woman I was with and commented, they don't look attractive at all. She replied, that's the current style. I don't think they're trying to look attractive. Observing the rest of the young women around me, I saw that she was right. Most of the others resembled them. Appearance, though, is not the only way in which American women are not trying to be attractive. The typical American woman today projects limitless entitlement, ruthless competitiveness, an advanced emotional incontinence that makes it all but impossible for a man to tolerate her, much less enjoy her company. A recent Instagram video that went viral showed a French man walking the streets of Los Angeles, explaining how he had just walked out on his first date at a restaurant with a local woman after observing that her lengthy food restrictions and preferences eliminate nearly every option on the menu. Au revoir, Jennifer, he concluded. Um, another, an American woman living in Russia posted a threat, threat of complaints on social media after failing to get a second date with any local man after six months in Moscow. Quote, one man told me at the end of the first date that I wasn't attractive enough for him to go out with the second time. I reminded him that I earned more money than him and have a better apartment, an apartment that I pay for with my own income. Additional comments made it clear that she was entirely unaware of the expectations of local men regarding both feminine dress and body habitus, and that Russian men couldn't care less. What she makes or how nice her apartment is. They want a pretty, charming, carefree woman and aren't hesitant to say so to her face. American men want the same thing, but don't have the clarity of mind or the courage to say so. They have become pussified. I actually don't like that word pussified because pussies are a beautiful thing, and I don't think we should use it in a disparaging way, but let's continue. We could say that they have become cowardly, weak, afraid, people pleasers, doormats, passive, I would use those words probably uh, more. I believe the root cause of this problem in American women is environmental. It is a problem of bad values. Women in this country have been taught that looks don't matter, that career is more important than family, that men are either dangerous or weak and incapable and that the world would be a better place if only women were in charge. Everything they're taught is wrong. Everything they're taught is a lie. And the fault lies with schools, media, feminism, and parents. These institutions and individuals have corrupted their minds, their emotions, and their characters. They have trained women to live in a fantasy world of us versus them where the me is more important than the we, where one's feelings dictate truth and goodness and even virtue itself. These toxic teachings have rendered women developmentally arrested and incapable of adult partnerships with men. This tragedy harms not only men, but women. Men need women, but so do women need men, despite what feminism has taught. Yes. American men today have largely decided they would simply rather be alone than continue to be feel battered and exhausted. 
by an unending stream of bad dates with unpleasant women. No healthy person wants to play with a porcupine. Now, I think um, uh, regardless of whether we agree or disagree with him or not, I thought this was worth sharing. And again, let me just reiterate um, the qualities that at least Donovan says and Mark, Dr. McDonald here lists, that are attractive qualities in a man and attractive qualities in a woman. And I think I agree with this. So these are good qualities to kind of have in our mind and to work on. So for men, masculine qualities, strength, physical strength, and mental strength. And these are qualities that your testosterone naturally gives you. So don't subdue them uh, because society told you they're toxic or anything like that. You've got to build these strengths, guys. Strength, courage, mastery, and honor. Strength, courage, mastery, and honor. Those will make you attractive to women. Strength, courage, mastery, and honor. Okay? Uh, very important. The most important. And I'm going to include in that physical strength, getting to the gym, developing social skills, courage to talk to women, start a business, put yourself out there, honor, keeping your word, mastering skills. These are all masculine qualities. These will make you attractive to women. Those are the ones to focus on, you guys. If you're not getting women, I would say you're lacking in these four qualities. It has nothing to do with your height or your abs. I had to block someone today because he kept talking about height and abs. I don't, I don't allow, I have a boundary on my channel against um, toxic manosphere talking points and victim mindsets. And um, it's a boundary I have. And I, I wish I could let everybody know on the video, if you leave any comments where you say, all women just want this or all men just want that, you know, uh, I, I just block people because I don't want to hear it. It's not true. Okay. So strength, courage, mastery, and honor. And I crave that. And there's a shortage of that in men today. Yes, they're afraid. They're afraid of women. They're afraid of viruses. They're afraid of their bosses. They're just afraid. Um, and that's not sexy. Okay. So that's why I am single. Because I haven't found anyone who's got strength, courage, mastery, and honor and who has pursued me in, with that. Okay, enough of that. Women, what do women need? Okay, pretty, carefree, and charming. So, yes, we have to make our own money, okay? That is important. A decent man is going to want a woman who isn't just uh, living on the streets or depending on her parents, right? But... But that's just a side thing. That's not the main thing that makes you valuable to a woman. You have, we have to be pretty, pretty, like wear feminine dresses, um, fix our hair, wear some makeup. Um, I'm not wearing anything now, but wear um, fitted clothing, uh, get rid of all the baggy stuff, get a bunch of dresses in your closet, um, put on some jewelry. If you go on a date, put on a pretty dress, put on some heels, make yourself pretty, get some lingerie, work on your fitness, eat well so you can be pretty. Uh, it's more important for a woman to be pretty than for a man to be pretty. Unless you're gay, then you gotta be really pretty, though, okay? Wanna be pretty. He wants something, he wants to delight in our beauty. And when I say pretty, I think that our prettiness is also like our inner radiance and our inner joy and our playfulness. So a man wants to, he wants to delight in our company. So that's where carefree and charming, like, um, like you're happy with yourself. You're playful, you're fun, you're easygoing, you're interested in him. Um, you're fun to be around, you know, um, authentic, loving, open-hearted, warm, just like interested in him, like a happy person, a happy person, not like, not angry at men, not hating men, not all stressed out from work and complaining about everything, like a victim. Women, men want witty, women to be pretty carefree and charming. And I would say that they really do appreciate if a woman is really into them and kind of does a little bit of like cooking 
and homemaking things, you know, um, womanly things, I think are really good. Charming. I do not know how to be charming, but I know how to be pretty and carefree. And I think that a lot of men also want a woman who's intelligent. I'm going to add that to the list. I don't think Donovan covered them all because intelligent men want a woman that they have something in common with and something to talk about. They don't just want some pretty carefree airhead. You know, they want someone who's got something going on. I remember dating a guy years ago. He was a very, very successful, very good looking guy. Um, we only went on a couple of dates, but he told me that he was very um, uninterested in all these hot soccer moms that pursued him and his daughters, like um, soccer games and um, surfing events, because they were just like all made up and had were boring. He's like, I want a woman who's got something going on. So I really think that unless a man's just looking for a hoochie coochie mama to fuck, He's going to want someone who's intelligent, who's got something going on, who's interesting and self-reliant, you know, like a powerful woman. But but I think for both sexes, I want to say something about being angry at the opposite sex, because I notice that when I meet younger men, they're always so open hearted. They're always so excited and they haven't, you know, it's harder as we go through life and as we get older it becomes more challenging and I think you will find fewer people who are carefree and happy and and open and um, you know open-hearted and loving and excited about the opposite sex because we've had so many more chances to be disappointed and it's easy to take the baggage of the past into the future or to be disappointed in the opposite sex, or to be angry with the opposite sex. And that for me myself has been, you know, my mindset has been, you know, a problem. It's been a little bit difficult because I have been disappointed by men. I like men, yet men have disappointed me uh, my whole life um, in relationships, D disappointed me in one way or another. And so that's one thing I want to work on with my um, therapist. I mean, I'm friendly with men, but I, I used to be like very excited about every prospect that I met and then none of them would turn out. None of them would turn out. And so I kind of got a little disillusioned and stopped trying or I can be kind of like, well, what does this guy want? You know, it's easy to go there. I really, really am aware of it. But some people get very, very far off the deep end with that where they start hating all men or the, the men who start hating all women and the the thing that makes you the most <laughs> guys if you hate women you are like the Robert Glover said as I quote in my last video you're radioactive to women because we can pick that up and I block guys who come on here being these women haters and toxic talking points it doesn't bring me forward it's not attractive and it's not even true that women just want tall guys with abs um, that's a negative mindset and that's woman hating and projection and women can do the same thing where they're like well all men are just after my body or all men are just narcissists or all men are just you know gonna hurt me or disappoint me or let me down so what makes people also attractive is their inner warmth, their inner warmth, their warmth. And we can pick that up, especially women can pick that up very easily. Um, if you like women or not, if you like us or not, if you're warm or cold or angry, we pick that up more easily. We pick up on emotions more easily than men. I think that's why women f are the ones that fall more often for divorce because we're more emotionally aware. But anyway, I think that um, uh, a lot of women that, um, I think that a lot more, especially younger women would do very well with men if they uh, develop, like focus on being pretty and being nice and being intelligent and interesting and fun. 
because uh and the way to do that ladies to be more fun and all is to nurture your pleasure to nurture your joy to find time in your day in your life to live in a home that's happy and joyful and peaceful to make time for things that bring you joy and pleasure sexual pleasure pleasure in exercising pleasure in your food pleasure being out in nature maybe with your pets with your female friends nurturing your pleasure nurturing your joy things that bring make you in awe uh, things away from the phone like uh, do you like to play an instrument do you like to sing do you like to watch the birds nurturing our joy is super important and that makes and um being fun, uh, being a person who easily laughs. Um, like when I'm with my clients, we're all, we'll, we, like we laugh. People always say I'm a lot of fun. I know in these videos I'm pretty serious, but um, I, I think those qualities are important and I nurture those. Um, I'm not the best at cooking. Cooking is good, but if you're just cooking, you're not fucking, you know, I don't know if that's good either, but and also for men is to to be a guy that likes women, you know, that is comfortable with women and talks to women. That is the biggest thing. And I think that's what a lot of men are lacking today. They're afraid to talk to us or approach us. And I mean, if you're afraid to talk to me, how can I count on you or rely on you for anything if you're so afraid, you know? That's kind of a weeding out factor for me. So anyway, um, I just wanted to share that with you because I'm always like, well, what are the things that men are looking for? Pretty carefree and charming. And um, I don't believe that men don't care what, about our education or income. They absolutely do because I'll tell you why. That's another thing that kind of annoys me when I hear that because how many men are actually able to be a provider? Very few men in this world today can be a provider. They need a woman who works. Sure, they might want to go on a date with a woman who's hot and pretty and fun, but if she's got a bunch of debts and she can't manage her money and she overspends and she has... Uh, no ability to provide for herself and no education. She's just cute and fun. I don't think a lot of men could actually uh, support that. I don't think they could. And I think they would probably get bored of her pretty easily. She might be fun to have dinner with or to see as a sex object, you know. So I don't know if this guy in Russia was actually looking for a wife. But my idea is that this woman was, um, she was probably not dressing in a feminine way. And she was probably acting very entitled and arrogant and not feminine. Um, men complain that they don't want to get married because, well, if I get divorced, she's going to take half my money. So they're very concerned about the money, but they say they don't care about a woman's income. Well, if a woman isn't working, if she's a stay-at-home mom, when she gets divorced, she is going to need half your money. So I don't believe the thing that men don't care about women's money, but I think what is true is that her money cannot be a substitute for her kindness and her warmth and her personality. She's got to have it all. A woman has to have her own money and her education because she has to be able to provide for herself. And because a man can't provide, few men can be the sole head of household, and a lot of men don't want to be. But she also needs to be able to drop that when she comes home and to be feminine and fun and playful and pretty. So that's, that's really what I think. We, we all have to be the whole package. See, people used to get married. People used to get married a long time ago, um, arranged marriages. Uh, and then they got married out of necessity. Women couldn't work. And men, men needed women and women needed men needed. Now it's more about wanting, and so we're getting really, really picky. Um, we're expecting a lot more, so we have to be the whole package. A man has to be a man has to be able to do everything a woman does, and a woman has to be able to do everything a man does. Like we have to be able to work, we have to have an education, and men have to be in touch with their feelings, and they have to be good in bed. You know, um, 
So more is demanded of us, but that's okay because we have conveniences of modern life and it's easier now to cook and to do laundry. So it's, we have to develop our personalities now to be attractive to the opposite sex. So um, those are just some of my thoughts and my ramblings. And um, I know someone's like, your videos are really long. I can't watch them all. Yes, that's true. My videos are uh, designed for me to free flow. And they're designed for people who enjoy longer videos. If I were to write a summary, because I kind of free flow, it would be more work on my part. And I don't really make enough money on this channel. I don't know if it would help me grow my channel if I had like little subsection chapters where I'm like, now I'm talking about this and now I'm talking about this. And I also think if I write a summary in the description, people won't watch my video. And I think it's better for my channel if people watch my video. This is just me talking, you know, <laughs> like, um, but uh, I know my videos are really long. So I, I'll do, I'll tell you what, I will make a short of this video and say for the whole video, go to my YouTube channel. That's what I'll do. Thank you for watching.